Hey everyone! Welcome back to our channel 10xGenAI, where we dive into the fascinating world of technology and innovation. In the last video, we have seen how to create a search assistant, using Langchain's built-in tools, SERP API, and LLM math. The assistant was able to answer users' query by searching Google, and solving math problems. In today's video, we're diving into the world of LLM-driven data analysis and visualization, using two powerful tools, Langchain and Pandas AI. In Langchain, we are going to use SQL Database Agent and Pandas Data Frame Agent. These tools leverage the capabilities of large language models, to simplify complex data tasks. Let's get started. First, we'll see how to create SQL Database Agent. This agent allows you to interact with a SQL database, and retrieve information using natural language queries. Before we start, make sure you have the necessary packages installed. You can use the following command to install them. Now, let's dive into the code. We import the necessary modules for creating the SQL database agent, and working with Langchain and OpenAI. Let's load the environment variables from .env file, which contains OpenAI API key. Alternatively, you can set the environment variable in the notebook itself, like below. Next, create an LLM with chat OpenAI method from Langchain. Here, we are using GPT 3.5 turbo model with temperature set as 0.7. We'll be using the Chinook database as an example. You can download it from the link provided in the description. This is the diagram of database, with various tables and relationships between them. We will interact with some of these tables using natural language queries. We set up a connection to Chinook database using the SQL database dot from URI method. And initialize a toolkit for working with SQL databases, which takes the database and open AI model. Next, we create a SQL database agent using create SQL agent and configure it with the OpenAI model and the toolkit we just initialized. Verbosity is set to true for debugging. Agent type is agent type dot openai underscore functions to enable interaction with OpenAI's models. Now that we have our SQL database agent set up, we can use it to run SQL queries using natural language. For example, we can ask to describe a table named playlist rack available in the database. As you can see, the agent is able to give the detailed description of the table, that includes column names, schema, and few sample rows from the table. Now let's run few SQL queries using natural language instructions. The first query we ask is, list the total sales per country, and which country's customers spent the most. And yes, the agent is able to list countrywise sales, and the country with highest spends. If you observe the chain, it is first listing the available tables, and is able to figure out the right tables for the query asked, which are invoices and customers tables. It is looking at the schema of each table, and the sample rows, that helps to prepare a SQL query. This is the query the agent has prepared and run for us. Now, we will give another query to show the total number of tracks in each playlist. The playlist name should be included in the result. This time it has selected three tables and prepared a query, where it is taking count of total tracks by joining the tables, and here is the output. We got what we asked, playlist-wise total number of tracks. You can play around with more queries like this and check the results. Now, we will see how to create Pandas Data Frame Agent. Creating a Pandas Data Frame Agent is a great way to leverage language models and perform data analysis tasks on a Pandas Data Frame using natural language. 
First, import the required libraries. From Langchain Agents Import, create Pandas Data Frame Agent, and also import the Pandas Library for data manipulation. We will be using Titanic Dataset for this demo, which you can download from the link given in the description. Let's load the dataset into a Pandas Data Frame DF. Next, create a Pandas Data Frame Agent using the Create Pandas Data Frame Agent library that we imported. As in the SQL Database Agent, Pandas Data Frame Agent is also initialized with the same set of parameters, like this. Now let's run a query with the initialized Pandas Data Frame Agent. Let's ask for the number of rows in the data frame. The agent will interpret the query and provide a response. And here is the answer. The data frame has total of 891 rows, which is correct. If you notice, the agent is making use of Python REPL AST tool to generate and run Python code for the given query. Let's ask, how many people have more than three siblings? The answer is, there are 30 people in the data frame who have more than three siblings. You can check the Python line of code that is generated for this query. Now ask one final question, what's the square root of the average age? The answer is 5.59. Look at the code generated by the tool, it is able to import Pandas library, create a sample data frame with age column, calculate mean of that column, and finally calculate square root of the mean. Now, let's look at what Pandas AI is and what generative AI capabilities it offers. Pandas AI is a Python library that adds generative AI capabilities to Pandas, the popular data analysis and manipulation tool. It is designed to be used in conjunction with Pandas, and is not a replacement for it. Pandas AI makes Pandas conversational, allowing you to ask questions to your data in natural language. For example, you can ask Pandas AI to find all the rows in a data frame, where the value of a column is greater than 5, and it will return a data frame containing only those rows. You can also ask Pandas AI to draw graphs, clean data, impute missing values, and generate features. Pandas AI works by using a generative AI model to generate Python code. When you ask Pandas AI a question, the model will first try to understand the question. Then, it will generate the Python code that would answer the question. Finally, the code will be executed, and the results will be returned to you. So, let's try using Pandas AI on a sample GDP dataset. First, install the Pandas AI library. And import Smart Data Frame from it. Also import Pandas library. Let's create a Pandas data frame for the GDP data. This data frame shows GDP of different countries with their happiness index. You can also instantiate a data frame from several different sources, including CSV, Excel, or Google Sheets. Now let's initialize a language model. Pandas AI provides different methods to connect with LLMs. Let's import OpenAI from pandasai.llm and create an instance. Make sure the OpenAI key is set as environment variable. Now that we have instantiated the LLM, we can finally instantiate the smart data frame, which takes the Pandas data frame we created and the LLM. A smart data frame inherits all the methods and properties from the original data frame DF, that means you can run all Pandas native operations, using smart data frame. For example, you can filter the country by United States like this, just as you do in Pandas. Now, let's chat with our data using, chat, method of smart data frame. Our first question is, return the top 5 countries by GDP. Here you go, it's very quick. Now ask another question, what's the sum of the GDP of the two unhappiest countries? 
It's really lightning fast. Let's see what code it is generated. First of all, it's importing all the dependencies required, and analyzing the given data in four steps, prepare, process, analyze and output. In the prepare step, data preprocessing and cleaning is done if necessary. In the process step, data manipulation is done for analysis such as grouping, filtering, aggregating, etc. In the analyze step, it conducts actual analysis. In the last step, it returns a dictionary with output type and output value, where output type can be text, data frame, or a plot. An example is shown here how the output is returned. In this case, the output type is text and the value is a string. Here is the function it is created for the given question. It is taking a list of data frames as input and concatenating them, sorting the values by happiness index, taking the top two countries GDP and summing it up, and finally returning the output dictionary with output type as number, and the value as the sum calculated by the function. At last, it is calling this function and saving the result in a variable. Now let's see how to use Pandas AI to easily plot a chart. We'll ask, plot a chart of the GDP by country. It has given a nice bar chart, with country on x-axis and GDP on y-axis. As an alternative, you can use shortcuts. Shortcuts are functions that avoid you to write a prompt and do the magic under the hood for you. For example, you can use plot bar chart shortcut to generate the same chart, providing the x-axis and y-axis fields like this. So for example, if we want to visualize as a pie chart, you can instead call the plot pie chart shortcut, passing the fields we want to use as labels, and the one we want to use as values. Sometimes, you might want to work with multiple data frames at a time, letting the LLM orchestrate which ones to use to answer your queries. In such cases, instead of using a smart data frame, you should rather use a smart data lake. The concept is very similar to the smart data frame, but instead of accepting only one DF as input, it can accept multiple ones. Let's import smart data lake from Pandas AI. Create a data frame employees underscore DF with employees data that includes employee ID, name and department. Create another data frame salaries underscore DF with employee ID in salary columns. Now create a smart data lake with these two data frames, and a config that takes in LLM parameter. Let's chat with our data lake. The first question we ask is, who gets paid the most? It is able to identify that Olivia is the one who gets paid the most. Let's look at the code generated in the back end. It has created a function that merges the two data frames on employee ID, locating the maximum salary and the corresponding name of the employee, and returning the output dictionary. We have seen that when we instantiate a smart data frame, we can pass a config object as the second argument. This object contains custom settings that will be used by Pandas AI when generating code. Let's look at some of the important parameters. Save underscore logs is one of the config parameters. By default, all the logs are written to pandas ai.log in the root of the project folder. This behavior can be modified by setting this to false. Verbose is another parameter to print the logs in the console as pandas ai is executed, which is false by default. Now the most important parameter is enforce underscore privacy, which defaults to false. If set to true, Pandas AI will not send any data to the LLM, but only the metadata. By default, Pandas AI will send five samples that are anonymized, to improve the accuracy of the results. This is very important, if your data contains sensitive information, that cannot be sent over the internet to LLM. Save underscore charts is another parameter to save the charts generated by Pandas AI. It defaults to false. 
you will find the charts in the root of your project, or in the path specified by save underscore charts underscore path parameter. Enable underscore cache parameter is used to enable caching, which is true by default. If set to true, Pandas AI will cache the results of the LLM, to improve the response time. If set to false, Pandas AI will always call the LLM. Use Error Correction Framework is another parameter to decide whether to use the Error Correction Framework or not. It defaults to true. When set to true, Pandas AI will try to correct the errors in the code generated by the LLM, with further calls to the LLM. It depends on another parameter called max underscore retries, which indicates the maximum number of retries, when using the error correction framework. The default number of retries is 3. When set to false, Pandas AI will not try to correct the errors in the code generated by the LLM. Another important parameter is custom prompts. You can use this to override the default custom prompts used by Pandas AI. There are two types of prompts that you can override. The first one is generate Python code. This is the prompt that is used to generate Python code from a natural language query. Pandas AI uses this prompt as the standard prompt for the first query. Correct underscore error is another prompt that is used to correct the generated Python code. Whenever the code generated by Pandas AI is not correct, an exception is raised, and a new call to the LLM is made with this prompt to correct the error. To create custom prompt, create a new custom prompt class, inherited from base prompt class, like this. In this example, we are creating a new inherited class, my custom prompt, which sets up a custom prompt to be used by Pandas AI. It also accepts dynamic values from the user. This class can be called when creating smart data frame with generate Python code key as shown here. Callback is another parameter which takes functions that are called at specific points during the execution of the Pandas AI class. They can be used, for example, to get the code as soon as it is generated. Pandas AI comes with a few built-in callbacks that can be used to get the generated code. The STD out callback prints the generated code to the console as soon as it is generated. This is the example of STD out callback. The file callback writes the generated code to a file as soon as it is generated, and this is the example of it. That's it for this video. To summarize, we've explored SQL Database and Pandas Data Frame Agents from LangChain. We have also seen the features of Pandas AI Library and how to work with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Please like and share the video to other tech enthusiasts. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to get updated on more tech insights. Stay tuned and keep exploring.